Think of the most overpowered build you've ever heard of. Which build dominated the meta so severely that the name of the expansion they existed in brings images of terror to your mind? That's right folks, today we're going to talk about one of the most requested topics, how to play a dinosaur. Is it even possible in the current meta? But first, to give you an idea of how overpowered they were, let's talk about all the records they still managed to hold even though several expansions have came out since the end of their dominance. Tankiest build of all time, best defensive move, most damage inflicted in a single hit, largest land build, and most damaging slash attack. The list goes on, but you get the idea. They were some of the most powerful classes of all time. But we can't talk about dinosaurs without mentioning the obvious. Nerfs quite literally annihilated the viability of most dinosaur builds. While the smallest of the builds managed to remain relevant to the meta, all builds possessing the megafauna trait vanished. But does this mean it's impossible to generate a dinosaur build if you know exactly what you're doing? Let's take a look at some of the attempts that have been made and how it's panned out for them. Most bird players pick their character because they're enticed by the flight ability, but that hasn't stopped a few players from breaking the mold and choosing a ground-based bird class. Since they're not worried about becoming too over-encumbered to fly, this allows them to gain traits other birds can't support, such as high run speed and fighting type moves like Mega Kick. This is their most dinosaur-like trait. In fact, the Cassowary even managed to spec into the same ability which gave the ancient raptor builds the slash attack record I mentioned earlier. Now I've gotten a lot of comments from people who believe that these builds have an argument for being high tier, citing the dinosaur-like capabilities of some of these builds, like run speed and high damage potential. So let me be frank. Flightless birds get completely bodied left and right in the current meta. Sorry, but if you think having legs like a dinosaur puts you anywhere near the dominant potential of a fully-fledged powerhouse like the Velociraptor or Triceratops, I don't know what to tell you, so I'll do my best to show you instead. I know it's tough to believe that a build equipped with such good weapons could fail, but the fact is they have losing matchups pretty much across the board. Not only do they get whooped by high tiers like lions, dogs, and pigs, but they lose to mid tiers like hyenas, dingoes, kangaroos, and pythons, and even bottom tiers like cheetahs. So yeah, as tempting as this build might look, don't get suckered in. If you need any more convincing, consider that the two strongest examples of flightless bird builds, the elephant bird and the moa, were both completely suppressed by thieving based classes which raided their respawn areas, forcing them to quit the servers completely. However, I do feel like I should dispel some of the dumber rumors I've heard regarding this class. It's a common belief that ostrich players frequently use the worst stealth move in the game when frightened. That's simply inaccurate. Ostriches do have one thing going for them, they can escape most conflicts because of their high movement speed. Also, with regards to the Great Emu War, where the human players of the Australian server attempted to ban emus, it's commonly regarded as a victory for the emus, to which I have to say, really? Check out Sam Manella's video on this topic for more information. Oh, and if you do, tell him I say hi, he's my favorite. But I digress, let's move on from flightless birds to a better dino mimic. A build which retains its megafauna trait, has solid defense, HP, speed, and crazy high damage, the Komodo Dragon. The Komodo Dragon completely dominates parts of the Indonesian archipelago, and it's no surprise why. It's the only lizard which has attained megafauna status, and has a number of special abilities. The Komodo Dragon's bite has fairly high base damage, but also induces a bleed effect due to an anticoagulant debuff. This drains the target's stamina over time, making any battle against the Komodo Dragon an uphill battle from the start. The Komodo Dragon also has been known to use the Tail Whip move, which is a strong, disjointed attack which can knock down opponents or inflict a stun. On the defense, the Komodo Dragon is resistant to many debuff effects and disease effects because of its antibacterial blood. This ability is so sought after that human data miners are attempting to mod this into consumable medicine items. Are these abilities and stats alone enough to set the Komodo Dragon so far above flightless birds to the point where it's nearing dinosaur potential? Are flightless birds doomed to fading from the meta? If they don't change their playstyle, I would say that yes, they will. To be honest, those birds do have the potential and abilities to be much higher on the tier list, but they lack one thing that the Komodo Dragon does well, hunting in packs. I've talked about how powerful coordinated attacks can be before, and I probably will continue to praise such a trait in future videos. It simply is that good. One cassowary is already dangerous enough, but can you imagine how dominant they could be if they formed bands and attacked all at once? Bigger targets are worth more experience. I don't want to sound like I'm biased towards carnivorous builds. What I'm really getting at is that teamwork is almost always beneficial to its participants. And that might be what could allow them to spike up on the tier list again. The XP gained from defeating larger targets could even allow them to reclaim the megafauna trait. 
Only time will tell. Thanks for watching, everyone. Are you an angry ostrich main who wants to give me a piece of your mind and tell me how you play a top tier character? Please go right ahead and leave it in the comments. Are you a salty former dinosaur main trying to relive their glory days? By all means, let me know. Or if you simply got a build you'd like me to analyze, feel free to suggest it either in the comments or if you'd like to force me to comment on it or get some other benefits like being able to talk to me directly about the game or help me research and make videos, consider investing in my Patreon. Thanks everyone.